Okay, here are some of the tools that I use to handle a hammer. So the main factor is the hammer head itself. Um, if you're forging your own hammer head, what I found to be the, the best is <clears throat> the top end. So you can see here's a, a, a hammer I recently forged out. The top of the eye should be a little bit wider than the bottom. Even just by a fraction, just by even one millimeter makes a huge difference. In the past, I, uh, I would work my hammers in slightly different manner. I used to make uh, sort of uh, an hourglass shape, which was a little bit easier to forge, but that didn't keep the hammer heads as secure as this consistent taper from the bottom end to the top. And it just has to be, for me, I just do it side to side, the front to back, is almost exact but the side to side <clears throat> is uh, like I said the top is just a millimeter or maybe two wider so then when the handle is inserted and then wedged it'll split it open the wood open and it'll be very hard for it to move down unless the wood shrinks considerably and even if it does come loose you can always use a larger wedge to tighten it up so I've had a lot of success with this method like I said in the past I've used different different types of wedges and I've used a uh, different style of, of uh, forming an eye and different types of woods but the technique that I've hit on of late I've had a lot of success with so I'll, I'll go through that right now the second thing quickly is the wood that you choose uh, it should be a hard dense wood but it should have a very straight grain this is a type of Asian ironwood and uh, you know, I have to choose the pieces because some pieces have wavy grain or maybe change the grain pattern changes direction or maybe has a knot. And for woods like that, you want to you want to avoid pieces like that. You know, um, what makes like North American woods like hickory very suitable for a, a handle is that it has a very long straight grain pattern. So you want to you want to choose the straightest grain wood that you can. That's still a hard wood. OK. So, yeah, let's get started, and I'll go through it, and I'll explain where needed. I'll first hog out some material on this thick piece. Now on to my plane. I'll work it with this until I get close to the final shape. Next I check how the length of the grain is orientated. So you can see <clears throat> maybe just slightly how the grain pattern runs this way lengthwise. So I'll make that the front and back. So I'll just mark it so I remember you know to orientate this handle this way. Just removing any moisture that might be in the end that's going to be inserted into the eye. So that this way, when I shape that end uh, to fit into the eye, it'll be I, I'm shaping it dry, so it'll only expand. It shouldn't, you know, it, it shouldn't shrink, and I'm not burning it. Just removing quickly, removing some moisture. Mark how far I want it to pass through, and where I have to work it down to fit in the eye, and also keep in mind the orientation again, front to back. get a measurement of the bottom end and then scribe that onto the top here and take off equal amounts of material along each side. score it on the bottom so it doesn't tear out 
Also, this would be better accomplished with a rip style saw, but this works. Just evening it out a little bit. Removing some material front to back so that measurement will fit the measurement of the eye. Easing this edge, slightly rounding this, the bottom end, so that when I hammer on this end to insert it into the uh, hammer eye, it won't split. Mark where the back end is, so I know that it's always the back. Give it a few taps and insert it, and then I'll knock it out. So, knock that handle out, and then now I have a, a perfect shape of how the eye is. Before I continue to hammer that in, now I'll cut for the wedge. <laughs> want to saw for the wedge before you do the final fitting because you're going to lose some material so this is going to be a little bit smaller when it's compressed together so if you made it fit beforehand then when you saw it you know saw in for the wedge you would make it would be a little bit too small then Just a quick aside, this is a beautiful Japanese wooden plane that I bought years ago. Look at how thick that is, that blade. But, you know, this is in need of sharpening, and so in order to remove that blade, you just tap the back end. And then the wedge and then the blade will come out. And then when you put it together, you get it close to where you want it, and then tap the front end to bring it forward, and the back end to bring it back to adjust. Yeah.
uh, cut a little piece from this one inch wide uh, strip for the wedge. And then the front, you know, this is going to be inserted like this. And this is about an inch, about an inch and a half, inch and an eighth. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. Just beyond the, the first half would be good. And uh, so basically the front to back here is just maybe like an inch and an eighth. So I'll widen this out a little bit. What I'll do now is, you know, so this will fit nice front to back, and I'll taper this a little bit in two directions this way, and then also put an edge on it so it'll it'll seat really nicely. So I'll use my angle grinder for that. So you can see how I've tapered it a little this way, and put a little bit of an edge on it. Also made a curve in this so it'll it'll you know, want to hammer in pretty easily and put a little bit of a crown on the top as well, just for ease of hammering. So there you have it for the wedge. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll take some alcohol, you take alcohol or acetone and wipe off the part of the wood that's going to be inserted just to remove any grease or any, any of uh, anything that might corrupt it from seating properly. And then do the same to the inside of the eye. And then one point that I have to mention that's a very important point is if you've, if you've hand forged your hammer, then the inside of the eye will have scale. So it's very important to remove that first. You know, when you're dressing the hammer, it's important to take a file and knock that heavy scale off. Because if that comes loose after it's handled, that'll loosen the handle and make it slip right out. So you want to get rid of that scale. You know, you can use that weak acid technique, the uh, vinegar bath, also if, if it's hard for you to reach in there and knock that okay, off. Okay, so this part here is not mandatory, but what I've done is I just have a, a, a base of modeling paste, a little bit of liquid latex, and then some five-minute epoxy, and I mix that all together and just smear that on both the handle and the inside of the eye, and just as insurance, since I am in, in really humid Taiwan. So I'll just mix that paste and the latex up a bit, this just kind of makes a, a flexible, kind of a flexible glue. I've experimented with so many things. Um, you know, there are some products, I just can't get them here, or at least I haven't found any, that, you know, it's kind of uh, like a flexible polyurethane or latex. But this, this serves, you know, serves my purpose pretty well. So mix that up, you know, spread it on inside the eye. You don't have to spread it on both, I suppose. It'll eventually come in contact. So spread that on in there, and then get some on and handle, and then insert. You don't have to do this step again. If you're just you know you're in a place that doesn't have high humidity, don't need to have this use this technique. Just insert and wedge. But like I said, I just like this as extra insurance. There's a little extra epoxy right here, and I'm going to use that to put on the wedge. So I'll set that aside. You know, get it orientated properly. The back is here. You know, Give it a few taps, and now I'll, I'll take this outside and seat it completely. Now hurry up here. So there you have that. So I'll go wipe that excess off, and then get the wedge in. Okay, now I'll get the wedge in. I don't know if you can see where I'm at here. Probably not, but I'll show you. So I tap that in, you can see. Now I see put that I'm... little extra bit of epoxy on the wedge before tapping it in. see it's inserted now completely and it's pushed out a little bit more of that material so I'll clean it give it one final cleaning and show you the hammer I and mean, boy this sure feels nice 
That'll give someone a lot of years of service without it. So I just gave it one last quick polishing with the cloth wheel and then just hit the uh, wedge here to smooth that out with this flap wheel. And there it is. Hammer is ready to roll. Finished hammer. So here's one final look. I put a little bit more oil on the handle. And you can see the wedge and how the handle protrudes just a little bit. Yeah, so if you were wondering about handling a hammer, or if you have experience, maybe, you know, hopefully you're able to glean something from my video here. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.